In this episode, I'm going to be bringing back to life a Marlin Sidewinder from the 80s. We're going to be stripping, cleaning, some 3D modelling, and even some anodising. Obviously rebuilding it back together, trying not to lose all the parts. Trying to straighten the neck out, restringing it, and trying to tune in a sprung-loaded bridge system, which is not as easy as you might think. Right, let's get stripping and cleaning then. The guitar that is. First of all, take off the locking nuts, which I think is a manufacturer's attempt at trying to keep this thing in tune. The Allen keys for doing the job are kept underneath on a handy little Allen key holder system thing that seems to have lost its threads. I'll have to uh, tap them down and dye them. Now to whip off the strings that haven't been played in at least 10 years. I should have just cut them all off really, shouldn't I? It's not like they're going to be any good if I use them again, but you never know, I might need one and get desperate sometime. Now for the pick guard and these extremely rusty screws. A sneaky look underneath, you never know what kind of booby traps you're going to come across. Especially with the way this thing was buzzing, crackling and whistling and all sorts that made me decide to take this thing to pieces in the first place. And it's a blooming good job I did check because I haven't been left enough cable to turn the pick guard over so I'm going to have to dewire the jack socket. Another quick check just to make sure there's no more booby traps or wildlife. No, I think we're all right. I've just got to desolder this. Blimey, the hole for the wire is so small that with the little bit of solder that I've left on it makes it too big to go through the hole. Makes me wonder how I'm going to get it back in there. You might find this interesting, but to be honest, this shot is just for me so that I can reference against where the wires go later on if I need to. I'll have a good look over this now. Think about what needs doing whilst I go to Gateshead. There's gonna be a six hour round trip for me to do. I decided I'm going to take the gear selector switch to pieces and give all the contacts a bit of a clean up and give it a bit of a greasing because it's proper crackly. Now, that's an old looking switch, but fortunately the old ones you could clean and maintain them. I'm not so sure the new ones do that, you probably need an app to operate them. Shiny, shiny. 
Now to take the booster switch to pieces because it doesn't work at all. The fact the switch wasn't even in one piece is probably why it wasn't working. Best check to see if there's no gremlins inside. There's got to be a reason why it all fell to pieces in the first place. Well, apart from the seesaw style contacts that have worn themselves flat a bit, so I'll bend them back, it's all pretty clean inside really. even though it is minute and fiddly. I'll put some grease on it while I'm in there as well. A splodge of white grease that I found in the depths of my drawer uh, not only helps everything keep together, but it's also conductive, I believe, as well. And I'm pleased the grease is holding all this together because this is fiddly. I've got to line up this minute pin to this even smaller piece of brown plastic that makes the, the switch rock inside. That's it, just pinch the holding lugs back together again. And yep, I've gone and broken the old and brittle plastic switch. Time to get sticky with some pooper glue. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. Well, that's that back together again. Feels like new now. Follow the link on the end screen for part two, where I make a select a switch toggle with a 3d printer and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there